Today on Bridge City News, gun violence just west of Toronto has claimed the life of a 17-year-old and sent several other young teens to hospital. There were plenty of barbs thrown on day four of the federal election campaign. We'll have some of the highlights for you. And a University of Calgary study is looking into why some young people recover from concussions quicker than others. Your nation. Your province. Your Southern Alberta. From the heart of Lethbridge, it's Bridge City News with Paul Arthur. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. A senseless shooting in Mississauga last night has claimed the life of one teenager and sent four other teens to hospital, including a 13-year-old girl. A 17-year-old boy died at the scene. Friends and neighbors have identified the victim as Jonathan Davis. Police are looking for seven suspects who fired over a hundred rounds at a group who were filming a rap video behind an apartment building at around 6.20 p.m. Police Chief Chris McCord says it appears to have been a targeted attack, but stressed that Mississauga remains one of the safest cities in Canada. Calgary police are investigating a break-in and robbery of a church in the northeast part of the city. The theft took place around 4 a.m. early Saturday morning with several men stealing items worth $40,000 from Kidan Emerit Ethiopian Orthodox Church. Surveillance footage caught the culprits on tape and police are now reviewing video. The suspects apparently spent over two hours stealing tools, electronics, cash and a safe. Police are looking for a blue pickup truck and are asking anyone with information to contact them. A University of Calgary study is looking into why some young people recover from concussions quicker than others. Dr. Michael Esser is running the study, which involves about 100 youth between the ages of 8 and 18 who have suffered head injuries. He says it's a mystery why patients, some with almost identical injuries, recover at different rates. The study uses brain waves to examine brain function changes in those with concussions. Esser says the results could help physicians tailor therapies when recovery takes longer than normal. Despite the windy and cool weather yesterday, it was a good turnout for the third annual Lethbridge College Cooley Fest. The free event is a chance to showcase all the 6,500 student college has to offer with campus tours and a whole lot of family fun as well, including live bands, a petting zoo, dunk tank and food vendors. Organizers say they are already planning ahead to do it all again next year. A University of Saskatchewan professor is warning that the province's wild pig population is expanding further south, closer to the border with the U.S. Ryan Brook of the College of Agriculture and Bioresources says the government isn't doing enough to stop the spread, noting that the animals are referred to as environmental train wrecks. The animals are a hybrid of domestic pigs and Eurasian wild boars. The Saskatchewan Crop Insurance Corporation took over the province's pig management program in 2015. BC forest industry observers say high log prices and dwindling timber supply are driving the industry crisis that's devastating communities. Hundreds of people are out of work and economic growth predictions have been slashed after companies announced shutdowns or curtailments in more than two dozen mills in the province. Observers say problems include timber damage caused by the mountain pine beetle, record-breaking wildfire seasons and provincial policies that are breeding uncertainty. Newfoundland and Labrador has a new environment minister after the previous minister resigned over his comments that one of the province's largest indigenous groups is prone to playing the race card. Derek Bragg was quietly appointed to the environment file on Friday night during a ceremony that was closed to the media. Liberal Premier Dwight Ball congratulated Bragg on Twitter, saying he brings valuable experience to the portfolio. Perry Trimper resigned from his cabinet post on Friday after apologizing for the comments he made in a voicemail message to the Innu Nation last week. Vancouver's mayor is calling on the federal party leaders to commit to supporting the use of pharmaceutical-grade heroin to prevent fatal overdoses from fentanyl-laced street drugs. Kennedy Stewart notes the Liberals haven't made any moves while in government, while the NDP and Greens both say they would back the idea, while Andrew Scheer's press secretary says the Tories support addiction treatment and recovery, not safer drugs. 
On day four of the federal election campaign yesterday, NDP leader Jagmeet Singh vowed to stand up to Donald Trump, while a new radio and internet ad from the Liberals took credit for doing just that. Conservative leader Andrew Scheer, meanwhile, addressed the way his party is handling controversial comments from candidates as compared to how Justin Trudeau has responded to similar issues. I'm prepared to stand up to Trump. Uh, I've already done it. I'm going to continue to do it. Uh, he's done really disgusting things. We've got to call out the treatment of families, babies being ripped from the arms of mothers. That's horrible. These. They're fellow human beings. They should not be treated that way. And the fact that Mr. Trudeau has remained silent, not called that out, is really troubling. I mean, it's wrong. You've got to call out people who are doing these type of things. Canadians expect it. I'm willing to do it. I'm prepared to do it. And I also mentioned today that uh, Mr. Trudeau took the advice of a CEO who said, make some concessions that might hurt the dairy farmers because it will please or it'll make Mr. Trump happy. That's not the way to conduct our affairs as a government, as a country, and I reject that approach. When it was time to push for a better NAFTA deal, your Liberal government fought tooth and nail to protect your jobs. We stood up to Donald Trump on trade when the Conservatives wanted Canada to back down. I'll let, my, uh, let the candidate's statement on that issue speak for itself. I have uh, obviously made it clear that I won't have anything uh, to do with that individual. Uh, and as I said the other day, we're going to see this from Liberals from now until Election Day, trying to do everything they can to distract from their leaders' lies, their leaders' broken promises, and the fact that their leader, Justin Trudeau, still has not come out to denounce anti-Semitic statements from one of his candidates. So we're going to continue to focus on the issues that are important to Canadians, making life more affordable, making sure that a government lives within its means to put more money in their pockets so that they can get ahead. South of the border, the United Auto Workers Union says contract negotiations with General Motors have broken down and its roughly 49,000 members will go on strike just before midnight tonight. The union's contract with GM expired yesterday and union officials said the two sides were far apart on economic issues. This is a decision that as President, President Jones has said, we do not take this lightly. This is our last resort. It represents great sacrifice and great courage on the part of our members and all of us. Here at the table and in the plants across the country, clearly understand the hardship that it may cause. But UAW members have never faltered in the fight for what is right and for what is just. And today, we str stand strong in saying with one voice, we are standing up for our members and for the fundamental rights of working class people in this nation. What we're asking of General Motors is simple and fair. We are standing up for fair wages, we are standing up for affordable, quality health care. We are standing up for our share of the profits. Iran's foreign minister says blaming his country for Yemeni rebel attacks on major Saudi oil sites is not going to end the war in the Arab world's most impoverished country. Late Saturday, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo directly blamed Iran for the Saturday morning attacks. Iran has denied any involvement. The drone attack sparked huge fires and led to a suspension of production operations at the two sites. There was no immediate impact on global oil prices as markets are closed for the weekend. Thousands of demonstrators chanted slogans and marched through a downtown Hong Kong shopping district today in defiance of a government ban. Riot police fired chemical-laced blue water and tear gas at protesters who threw Molotov cocktails. Some demonstrators burned Chinese flags and tore down banners congratulating China's ruling Communist Party on its upcoming 70th anniversary in power. Demonstrators also gathered outside the British consulate to demand international support for democratic reforms. Police in Britain have arrested one man in connection with the heist of a solid gold toilet from Blenheim Palace, the former residence of Sir Winston Churchill. The toilet, valued at up to one and a quarter million dollars, was part of an art installation by Italian artist Maurizio Catalan. Police say the thieves caused flooding in the historic building when they disconnected the toilet from the palace's plumbing. 
Recapping one of our top stories this hour, gun violence just west of Toronto has claimed the life of a 17-year-old and sent several other young teens to hospital. And a look at weekend weather, a few clouds overnight with a low of 8. Tomorrow the warm weather continues with a mix of sun and cloud and we should get up to 26 degrees. Homeopathic medicine has been around for hundreds of years. Some believe that it can successfully treat arthritis, diabetes, and even cancer. Hal Roberts sat down to discuss this with Lethbridge homeopath Jean-Jacques Van Tonder. That's next. But first, here's a look at what's happening in and around your community. Here's your Bridge City News community calendar. The 30th Annual Giant Pumpkin Festival and Auction in support of the Children's Wish Foundation is taking place Saturday, September 28th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Greenhaven Garden Center. Come out and enjoy face painting, wagon rides, a petting zoo, plus a live and silent auction, and much more. All proceeds benefit the Children's Wish Foundation in Southern Alberta. Big Brothers, Big Sisters and Lethbridge is searching for volunteers to mentor children and youth in their various programs. Volunteers commit anywhere from one hour a week to one full year. They have many kids on their wait list that are looking for a big brother or sister. Make a difference in a child's life and start something big. For more information, call 403-328-9355 or email info.leth at bigbrothersbigsisters.ca. And that's your Bridge City News Community Calendar.